Hey guys, it's Libby. Today I'd like to tell you about three novels I have read by the parents of Mary Shelley. They all have both titles and subtitles to varying degrees. So her father, William Godwin, wrote uh, Caleb Williams, or Things As They Are. Her mother, Mary Wollstonecraft, who you probably know mainly from her nonfiction piece, The Vindication of the Rights of Women, um, wrote Mary, subtitled A Fiction, and Mariah, subtitled The Wrongs of Woman. I read these three as part of my project to become acquainted with the late Georgian novel, so things published in the British Isles from about 1770 is where I'm saying late Georgian starts um, going through uh, the 1830s. Both William Godwin and Mary Wollstonecraft had very strong political ideas. Um, you probably know Mary Wollstonecraft as a feminist. Um, William Godwin uh, eventually became an anarchist. I don't think he was in like full-blown anarchism when he wrote Kayla Williams, but you can definitely see some threads of that in the work. Mary, a fiction, was published in the 1780s and the other two in the 1790s, so we're at the height of the French Revolution, and all three of these novels are what you could term Jacobin novels, which were novels for an English audience, sort of educating them about the ideas behind the French Revolution. Mary was written in 1788, Mariah in 1792, and it actually wasn't quite finished um, because Mary Wilsoncraft died as a result of complications from giving birth to Mary Shelley, um, who at that point was named Mary Godwin, just in case you're confused by this family having a bunch of different last names. Um, and Caleb Williams was at least published in 1794 when Mary Shelley was a babe. Now, as I was reading these, I couldn't help but compare them to Frankenstein. I will not give spoilers for Frankenstein or any of these three books in this video, but I would definitely suggest reading Frankenstein first before you read any of these three novels. Um, not because they are related, but because these three novels are not the best books that you are ever going to read in your life. And it would be helpful if you had some interesting literary critique to be doing in your head while you are reading them. There's similarity in the form between the three novels by the parents and Frankenstein. Um, one of the sort of famous things about Frankenstein is that it's sort of a story inside a story inside a story. You get that in the other three novels as well. You know, there's people telling stories and in their stories someone tells a story and then we maybe jump back out a level but then move over to another story inside that story. And it can get slightly confusing if you're not totally paying attention to who everybody is and who's telling whose story. Content-wise, though, at least for Mary Wollstonecraft, there aren't that many similarities with her daughter's work. I read Mary Wollstonecraft's two novels as a response to the typical female-led uh, Georgian novel. She really works hard to make it clear that Mary and Mariah are intelligent, um, whereas a lot of Georgian hero heroines can be read as more vapid. And she takes us inside a marriage and shows us what it's like, as opposed to the typical female-led Georgian novel where a marriage will occur at the end, or maybe like 70% of the way through, but typically it's a final event. In Mary, we get to see a lot of the protagonist's childhood and education. Um, she is self-educated because she had an older brother who her mother completely adored while she was neglected and just sort of figured stuff out for herself. Um, but when her brother died um, and her father was dead as well, leaving Mary an heiress. Um, she, her mother finally started paying attention to her and arranged for her a marriage with a man that she didn't know. Um, after the marriage, this man goes off to the continent. She pretty just about never sees him again, um, but she is still legally married, which is confining um, when she meets other people later down the line. The impression I get from Mary Wollstonecraft's writing and also from the novel Adeline Mowbray by Amelia Opie, which is a sort of pseudo-biography of Mary Wollstonecraft, um, is that she didn't really think that the marriage institution was reformable. She was more in the just sort of burn it to the ground <laughs> approach. She did actually have two long-term affairs before she married William Godwin, and one of those affairs resulted in a daughter. I found Mary a fiction quite uh, boring, not really a lot to go on with it. Um, and Mary Wollstonecraft did later say that like, you know, maybe this wasn't so great. Uh, but in Mariah or The Wrongs of Woman, she does definitely give you some stuff to chew on. Interestingly, this story starts in Medias Res, 
we have a woman named Mariah. She's been put in an insane asylum by her husband and she has recently given birth to a baby girl um, who has been taken away from her. After hearing a bit of the terrible backstories of other people in the insane asylum, um, we hear about Mariah's marriage with her husband, which was not great. Mariah also had an older brother who was much beloved of the parents, and in this story, it's the mother that dies first instead of the father. Um, the older brother sort of runs the house and is a despot over the other children. Her father um, d takes a mistress. He doesn't remarry, but he gets a housekeeper and starts having an affair with her. Um, Mariah just does not like this at all, so she marries um, a man who she kind of knows, and Mr. George Venables. Um, then it turns out that George is not so great either. He drinks, he gambles, he has illegitimate children. And a lot of Mariah's backstory is focused on the political situation that Mariah finds herself in. There's, you know, constant references to, like, the law and, like, you know, I would like to do this, but I just can't for practical reasons. The parts I found most interesting because they were very, like, progressive, I wasn't expecting to find this, were about what we would probably call statutory marital rape. Um, there is no depiction of violent rape in this book, but you do hear Mariah talking about how she does consent to having sex with her husband even though she does not like him, does not want to have sex with him, because she knows that if she doesn't, legally, she will have no assistance. And there's also a lot of discussion of the both legal and cultural double standard between men and women in a marriage. So men can have as many affairs as they want and neither the law nor culture will condemn him, whereas women, absolutely not. Now moving on to Caleb Williams by William Godwin. I know it has not escaped my notice that the protagonists of these books all share like name similarities with the author. Our main character, Caleb, is working class, but reasonably well self-educated. He gets a job working for a Mr. Ferdinando Falkland. There are some light gothic themes in this book, though I wouldn't go so far as to call it a gothic novel. Um, the uh, very Italian name of the sort of bad guy? being one of them. Um, in his duties as a sort of secretary for Mr. Falkland, um, he learns some stuff about Mr. Falkland's past, which are not great, but he also learns some stuff about Mr. Falkland's past that is good. And Caleb is kind of in a difficult situation. The first third to half of this novel is quite philosophical. Um, there's questions of whose job is it to ensure that justice happens? Should people be judged based on the sum of their actions or based on the worst thing that they've ever done? You can probably guess that things don't go great for Caleb as a result of this, and so the second half is much more of a thriller. I kind of miss the philosophy sections. <laughs> I wish that, you know, the first half had maybe been the first two thirds and then we had trimmed down the second half a bit. Um, but you hear about Caleb, like, hanging out with a band of robbers in the woods and um, moving to a city and having to constantly change his name and appearance and, you know, change his lodgings. Um, and there is some sort of exciting cat and mouse stuff going on. And then in the end we wrap up with a couple of scenes that actually really reminded me of Frankenstein. There isn't really a one-to-one -one correlation, but you have sort of someone um, with like a pseudo parent, like, you know, Victor Frankenstein isn't exactly the parent of the monster, but he is in some ways. And so like in Frankenstein, you get to see someone confronting their pseudo parents and like talk about the harms that they have done them. So of these three books, I would recommend Caleb Williams the highest. Um, then Mariah is interesting if, you know, what I've described so far um, does intrigue you, but Mary, I think you can definitely give a miss. Thank you very much for watching, guys. If any of you have read any of these books, I would be very interested to know your thoughts because they're not that popular. The Georgians just didn't quite hit it off as well as the Victorians. Thank you for watching. I'll see you later.